Hey, welcome back. My name's Justin. Today is going to be my follow-up to my review on the Elisa Strata Prime, where I'm answering questions I saw in the comments section, extra details I've learned, and stuff like that. Go watch the main review, though, because, you know, obviously that's the meat and potatoes of what you really, really need to know. This will be the extra stuff. But first, today's video is brought to you by eDrum Center. If you're shopping for new electronic drums, used electronic drums, or even accessories, go check out my discount link to them in the description below. Okay, so first up, how come I didn't talk about the Elisa Strata Prime Expanded Edition in my review? It seems like a pretty important detail to leave out, especially when I was talking about how they took away one of the crashes, when obviously there's an Expanded Edition that comes with way more components. Well, it turns out this is not an official product SKU from Elisis themselves. It should be, but this is actually a very, very well thought out bundle by Sweetwater. The regular version costs $3,500, and then the Expanded Edition, that costs $4,450 or you can buy the expansion pack for $1,000 flat. Now, what does this give you? It gives you two more 18 inch cymbals that all have bell zones, so they can be either a crash or a ride inside of the module. And then you get one more 14 inch pad, which in the photo is seen as a third floor tom, but in the module, when you plug it in, it's gonna show up as a side snare or extra percussion. So if you want this to be a third floor tom, you're probably gonna have to take one of the pre-existing floor tom two pads and then pitch it down a tiny bit to fake it as a third tom. So the question is, is this a good price? Is this a really good deal? I'd say that it's a fair price. For what they're offering, it ends up being about $333 per component. I don't think that's a crazy, amazing deal, but I don't think they're ripping you off either. The next question that I got, I don't have an exact quote here, but are trigger presets locked to input type? So basically what that means is, can I plug a tom into a symbol port? Or can I plug a symbol into a tom port? The answer is you can, but there's gonna be no trigger presets for that because they, they kind of just filter them out. So if you plug in a symbol into the aux drum input, you can't find a symbol preset to apply to that pad. You can even use the search bar and they just won't show up. I don't know the exact reasoning for why Elisis went down this route, but as of this current firmware, that's a thing. The next question that I got is, can you give us more details on third-party symbol compatibility? Like, can you plug in a Yamaha ride symbol and will you get all the zones working? Unfortunately, I don't have one of those symbols to test, but here's what I have tested. I've gotten a roll and crash to work with this. I think it was a CY12C. I've also gotten an ATV3 zone ride symbol to work with this in two zone mode, not three zones, but I gotten it to work as a crash symbol. I've also tested this with a three zone one cable Simmons ride from the SD1250, and I got all three zones and choke working on that beautifully, no setting adjustments required. I've also gotten a three zone cap percussion ride symbol to work with this from the KT4, all three zones work along with the choke. However, it may be because it's beat up, but I've noticed I had to be very aggressive with the settings because I was getting double triggering and stuff like that. But you can dial most of that away, except for the double triggering that happens when you release the choke strip. Another question that I got related to this is, can you plug in a Roland style, you know, two cable ride symbol? And what happens if you plug the official ride cable into one of them, and then the other port you plug into like Crash 3 or the aux drum input. I also tested that and unfortunately it doesn't work. The module sees it as two separate pads and there's no mode button switch inside of the trigger settings to force compatibility with a two, uh, two cable ride symbol. However, I do have a workaround you can try. I can't promise it will work, but there's a company that's famous for making a lot of symbol adapters called Zaramon. I think that's how you pronounce the name. And so that basically will take a two cable ride and make it work with a one cable module. The next thing I wanna cover is third-party hi-hat compatibility. Now, the thing that kind of confused me about this is that I assumed third-party hi-hats would not work with this module or that the hi-hat would be hurt in some way because they only list two presets, one for a 14-inch cymbal that comes with the drum set with their magnetic sensor on the bottom, and then a mysterious 12-inch version of the same thing, which is not currently sold. So I assume that means it'll be sold either on a cheaper version of the Strata Prime or a different drum set with a different module, but will use the same kind of cymbal technology. All that aside, uh, because they have presets for like Roland crashes, but no preset for a Roland hi-hat, I thought that meant that Roland style hi-hats just didn't work or would be harmed in some way. And I can't say for sure if they'll be harmed long-term. I, I can't tell you that. What I can say is that using a Roland style hi-hat on the bottom, uh, that will work. I'm using a Go Edrum one just for safety purposes. I didn't want to accidentally damage, you know, my Roland hi-hat open and closed uh, controller. But using this Go Edrum one, which appears to work on similar principles, yeah, it works. I'm getting open and closed with this thing.
And I also saw in a Facebook group, an Elisa Strike Pro Facebook group, that somebody was using the original Elisa Strike Pro hi-hats with this module. So those will work. I'll try to put the post here on screen so you can see what I'm talking about. So now that I've established that you can do this, the next question is, should you do this? To be honest, I have no idea. And I'm going to cover my butt legally here. Can't sue me. Uh, I'm not telling you to do anything. Okay, do everything at your own risk. All I know is that Elisis has trigger presets for Roland uh, crash symbols, but they decided not to make a Roland hi-hat preset. And they've also decided not to put a preset in for like an Elisis DM10 hi-hat controller or any other kind of hi-hats they already make. They don't even have Elisis hi-hats for the Elisis Strike or Strike Pro SE, but they do have those presets for the snare and the toms and the other symbols, except for, I don't think there's a ride symbol preset off the top of my head. So anyway, it just seems suspicious that they don't have a preset for this in the module. So I'm wondering if there's going to be any long-term ramifications for the health of the pad or whatever. So I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm just saying that it does work. And hey, while I'm sitting here filming this, I want to mention two other things really briefly. The first is I've noticed that if you factory default the module, so this is the way it comes out of the box, uh, you really have to dial in the crosstalk. It is not perfect out of the box. In fact, this drum set out of the box is so susceptible to crosstalk, you can create false hits just by clapping near the drums. Now, thankfully, the learn crosstalk button is very good. So just make sure you set up everything correctly. But that's just to illustrate that the crosstalk is pretty severe until you get those settings right, especially on Tom 3. Not exactly sure why. And the second thing is I want to reiterate from my previous review that the drum rack, you need to tighten everything down like a lot. Be very, very aggressive with that because these pads are deceivingly heavy and they will start to sag or the drum rack will start to bow this way or that way over time. So just make sure that you really crank everything down during setup or you could also switch to individual stands or you could switch to a Gibraltar drum rack down the line. There are things like this that allow them to lower the price tag down to $3,500. This is not the end of the world. It's just something I want to bring up in this part two of the video. The next question that I got is, are these hi-hats better than the Elisa Strike Pro SE hi-hats? So there's been two generations of Elisa Strike hi-hats. The original ones on the regular Strike and Strike Pro, that was a two-piece 12-inch set, I think. Most people didn't like those. They were universally, uh, is hated too strong of a word? I feel like most people didn't like those. And then moving over to the Strike Pro SE, I think those hi-hats weren't that bad, uh, but quite a few people didn't love that either. I personally thought they were okay for what they were doing. But anyway, yes, I do think that these hi-hats are hi-hat, since it's a one piece, it can't say hi-hats. This hi-hat is better because it's three zones. You get the bell zone. None of the other ones did that. And then you're also getting a 360 surface. So if they spin away from you, you're not going to lose the edge zone like in most electronic hi-hats. So that also makes it better than its predecessor. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a strike module in the older versions of the strike hi-hats to test head to head on open and closed performance, but I would assume it's as good or better in that scenario as well, but I can't tell you for sure. Now, of course, this leads to the question, are these hi-hats as good as the F-Note hi-hats around this price or the Roland Digital hi-hats, which are on the TD27 KV2, which is around this price as well? I'd have to say no, it's not on that level. Those hi-hats are just more advanced in my opinion. The next question that I see floating around out there is, can we buy this module separately? The answer is yes, but you probably don't want to because if you buy the module separate, you're probably going to be buying from a reseller on eBay. So the kind of person that will buy a whole drum set and then individually relist the snare, the toms, the cymbals and stuff. I guess they're probably necessary because some people really want those individual components, but you will have to pay a premium in order to do that. So last I saw, I had noticed an Elisa Strata module open box for $1,700. And in my opinion, that's, that's kind of more than I would spend on this particular module. And while we're on this topic, somebody asked me about the, the overall build of the module, like build quality. In my head, build quality and durability are two separate things. I'm not about to do a drop test with this module or smack it with a drumstick. However, they did say they did test hitting the screen with a drumstick and it was fine. So I don't, I can't really tell you details about durability because I don't own this drum set. I can't test the durability. However, I will say that the module build quality is maybe a step above the TD27 as far as feel in your hands. It feels more expensive in the hands than the TD27 module. However, it doesn't feel as expensive as a Pearl Mimic Pro or a Gave a G9 module. 
Those modules look very similar on the surface to the Elisa Strata module, but in the hands, you can definitely tell that those modules, they're definitely the next, the next price rung above this because they're using more metal and stuff in the design. Like there's little things here and there where definitely they brought down the price so they could sell the whole drum set for $3,500. The next thing I want to mention is that updates are coming down the line that will definitely add features to the module that I believe are needed. I can't tell you all of them, but like, for example, Bluetooth, they've confirmed is on the way. Right now, it's only Bluetooth MIDI, not Bluetooth audio. Like there's cool stuff on the way that will actually make the module better. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Also, BFD sound expansions are eventually going to be coming. They're, they're probably just going to be expansions that already exist in some capacity, but they don't have a way to bring them in quite yet, I believe. So anyway, take all this with a grain of salt. Just know that updates are coming. The next question that I got is, can you do cross stick? The answer is yes. They're handling this like a lot of drum modules. So there's going to be a mode button switch on the front of the module. Uh, automatically, I think it's going to be rim click, but if you press the mode button, it turns it into a cross stick sound. And no matter what mode you're in, you're always going to get a rim shot if you hit the head and the rim at the same time. Now, the, the trick here is that I don't have a great experience putting my palm on the drum head when I'm playing cross stick. So I would just hit the, the rim of the drum with your stick without getting your hand on the drum itself. And again, this is with default trigger settings. Maybe I could force it to work well with resting my hand on it, but it is what it is. The next question that I got is, what's the drum set footprint in actual feet or meters? So it depends on how widely you open up the drum rack. With my particular setup, because I sit farther back with my long legs and long arms and stuff, this drum set is seven feet by 4.58 feet, or 2.16 meters by 1.4 meters. You can't just measure the width of the drum rack itself depending on how far you open it. You also have to measure how far the cymbals are overhanging and how far the module is overhanging. Because even the wires on the back of the module, they add a little bit of extra distance to how wide the drum set is. This next thing is more of a tip. I recommend that if you find yourself kind of missing some of those softer hits on the hi-hats and the snare, like you feel like you're being forced to play the drums harder because of the difference in volume between the loud hits and the soft hits being real quiet. I would recommend putting a compressor on the snare bus channel and also on the hi-hat to bring up the, the volume of those softer hits. It reminds me of ATV on like the 85 module. With that module, it, I also feel like I have to play harder to get those louder hits. With this, you can fix that by putting a compressor on those pads that I mentioned. The next thing is a set of corrections. So uh, there was a slip of the tongue when I was doing my review. I said XLR inputs when I meant outputs. I don't think I confused anybody, but I just wanted to mention that. I also mentioned that the aux inputs are mono, and I'm still standing by that, but for clarification, the module manual says that they're TRS. So here's what's going on. If you plug in a stereo cable, it's still gonna act like a mono input. So you can't just plug in a stereo aux cable from your phone into one of the aux inputs and expect it to work right. You will need a cable that goes mono mono over to a stereo connection that then connects to your computer or your cell phone. But the, the ports are technically TRS. And one final correction is about the Ulysses Strike Multipad. In my previous video about the ARC trigger bar, I mentioned that the Strike Multipad doesn't have a threshold setting, but it turns out it was hidden in a different menu. It was under the pad menu instead of inside of the trigger settings menu. So I just wanted to mention that in this video in case you saw the last one. So just wanted to mention that. The next question that I got is about the weight of the symbols. Somebody asked, are these symbols lighter or heavier than Roland T's? This piqued my interest, so I went and measured it. Turns out the Elisa 16-inch crash is 3 pounds, 6 ounces, and the roll-on version of the same thing, that is 2 pounds, 14 ounces. In metric, that would be 1.5 versus 1.3 kilograms. So yes, the roll-on one is a little bit lighter. That weight difference is pretty minimal to me. These Elisa symbols just feel like regular, modern electronic symbols. They don't feel overly heavy or overly light. They just kind of feel the way that you would expect. And in case you're wondering, no, they don't flex. These are rigid. So the next question that I got is, do these have world percussion sounds built in? The answer is yes. They do have a nice selection of like cowbells and shakers and stuff you can select from. And they are multi-sampled. They're not like one-shot samples. So that's nice. In fact, you can really tell this on the egg shaker sample. Like you can hear a really big change in the sound from the softer shakes to the louder ones. The next question is from Anthony, and I'll put it up here on screen, but essentially he wants to know, does he have individual control of all six outputs? Like, can you send kick to one and snare to two and toms to three and then cymbals to four, that kind of situation? And as far as I can tell, as of this current firmware, the answer is no. It looks like, for example, if I select a snare bus, I'm gonna be able to send it to like three and four, five and six, that kind of thing, but I can't send it to one individual channel as far as I can tell. I'm not a module expert, but that's the way it's looking to me when I bump around. 
Okay, so that's about it for the questions. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate it. And thank you to the people on Patreon who helped make these videos possible. See you in the next one.